This is the brightest my car has ever been. <laughs> We're using two lights. <laughs> got dual light here. Because mm -hmm. it's to make up for the lack of light in the movie. <laughs> <laughs> like you said, we should have broken into somebody's house to review this. <laughs> Pro it's, it's the only true way to... To cover the uh, the feel of the movie, <laughs> I assume that uh, exactly like if we broke into Dave's parents' place. <laughs> I would pay to see a movie of Kenny chasing around people in the house. I could see him hearing a noise. I mean, he's got like the he's got like mm -hmm. the the white beard and everything comes shambling out in like a yeah. fucking tank top. Like what? And he's probably like, <sighs> I just go back to bed like there's been so many times be... where Kenny has gone Ugh, and gone back to bed like the time uh, I don't know, 10 or 12 years ago when Dave was shit faced and we were over at the Hilton bar and me and Nick got Dave home and just kind of left him in the bathtub <laughs> um, I mean we turned the water on for him <laughs> It was the water it's, was. It's the least you could do. <laughs> the water was warm when we left, and then I don't know, 7 a.m. I think rolled around. <laughs> the water was no longer warm, and uh, Kenny came in and just saw Dave laying there, the shower on him, and just went, uh, just went back to bed. <laughs> I love that man. Yes. <laughs> we got to reenact the same thing now. <laughs> it was Sarah. Only was Sarah walking in, finding Dave. Uh, <laughs> halfway through the side, you just drop your shoulders mm. and just... Uh, I give up. Well, this movie teaches us the valuable lesson of never breaking into Stephen Lang's house. <laughs> which, honestly... You should know, regardless of whether or not you I, see this movie. <laughs> yeah, I mean that's that's just a bad judgment to <laughs> yeah. start with. When you find like, <laughs> all right, there's some money in this house. I don't know. Let's go scope out this place. You see, you see Stephen Lang walking around in front of the house. You go, D -hmm. I've seen this man use a dinosaur skull as a desk. <laughs> I have literally seen that in a thing. <laughs> I have seen this man in a giant mecha outfit. Yeah, a huge mech suit with a giant, like, knife mm -hmm. to match. Exactly. And he gets, like, fucking stabbed through the chest in that movie. He's still in the sequel, from what I hear. Not even that can stop Stephen Lang. That... Well, it, about every movie, like... Fucking about every movie, he's got like prominent scars somewhere on him. Uh huh. Generally face related. Yeah, I've seen him literally play a character called the Party Crasher. <laughs> <laughs> well, he was the Party Crasher here too. Yeah. God, I love Stephen Lang. I'm so glad this movie's number one at the box office. I want more crazy blind Stephen Lang movies. I just want more Stephen Lang movies. <clears throat> what was he uh, kind of posing for, like on his Twitter or something like that? Was it oh, Deathstroke? No, uh, which honestly, I mean, he'd make a <laughs> he'd, yeah, he'd make a really good Slade Wilson. <laughs> uh, no, he was uh, uh, he was actually uh, vying for the position of Cable mm -hmm. in the the movie, based off of <laughs> basically the parody of what. Deathstroke is Deadpool. Mm, yeah, <laughs> but no, like, like I am one hundred percent behind the <laughs> idea of him as Cable, but I'm pretty sure that's not who they're gonna go with. Uh huh. Like, I think they've been talking about some other guy. It's like way the wrong age, as far as I could tell. If, well, maybe they're worried he'll murder them. <laughs> I'm just worried he, this movie was gonna hire, murder us. If you hire Stephen Lang to be the comic book villain, your hero's gonna die, and there goes your franchise. <laughs> we just saw a movie with him blind terrorizing people in the house. He lives to see another day. <laughs> just cannot kill this bastard. <laughs> this movie is awesome. It's <laughs> The Collector, if instead of The Collector, it's crazy blind Stephen Lang <laughs> terrorizing the robbers through your house. Yeah, it, re it reminded me definitely of, like, that. And, that, like, fucking, like, like, 
like the collector mm-hmm. people under the stairs, like yeah. shit like that. Like, mm-hmm. except fuck me, more intimidating somehow. Yeah, because it's uh. You're right that it is a good cross between those two, because Everett McGill kind of was the crazy Stephen Lang of the <laughs> early 90s. Like, Stephen Lang had just started being crazy Stephen Lang with, like, the the hard way. Um, unless the, like... <laughs> when you always forget that he was, like, dweeby Stephen Lang from the <laughs> 80s, like, from Manhunter. <laughs> then he's, at some point he decided, like, you know what? I'm just going to become huge and terrifying. Yeah. <laughs> he's been terrifying as ever since. That steely awesome. gaze that mm-hmm. you're not sure if he's looking at you or, like, into your soul. But uh, oh God. it's nowhere you want his eyes to be. Like, the scenes in the movie where it was going into, like, sort of, like, black and white night vision... With his dead eyes staring <laughs> right at the fucking camera. Like, turn your head or something. Like, fuck. Like, Shit. Like, they're, they're not doing anything. Mm. Like, close your eyes. Like, goddammit. Like, don't make me look at them. <laughs> this movie is thoroughly terrifying. Like, it doesn't do, like, the, uh, the really camp over the topness of, like, People Under the Stairs. Which, which People Under the Stairs is an awesome movie. But. Which kind of surprises me that it, it, it didn't have a whole lot of camp considering how it was, like, Sam Raimi and uh, and his guys kind of like executive producing it. Yeah, but I mean, it's the same team that made the Evil Dead remake, which um, th- this is a better movie than that. Oh, um, by far. But I mean, regardless of 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 what if someone likes or dislikes the Evil Dead remake, it's not really a campy film. I mean, well, I mean, it's a gore show, but. Compared to Army of Darkness, compared to Evil Dead 2, well, yeah. I mean... Or Ash versus Evil Dead. Yeah, 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 exactly. Um, this is this is a better movie than, than... And I don't mind the Evil Dead remake. I mean, it's nothing I necessarily revisit, but I thought it was fine for a gore show. This movie is light years beyond just simply being a gore show. And yeah, I, I think that uh, I think that this team, like... A, a, you know, like coming out with this, like, kind of shows that they have some some range of creativity when they're for, mm-hmm. behind a project that I I would after the after the Evil Dead remake, I, I wasn't really like whatever, mm-hmm. but uh, but yeah, I mean, after seeing this one, like, like I think when 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 they're working with original material and not like trying to rehash somebody else's pre existing work, like. Uh-huh. It really shows like they they they've they've got some some even with the Evil Dead remake. I mean, I, I like I I see why you don't like the movie. I see why anybody doesn't like the movie. But, but it's not a poorly made film. No, no, they they did a lot of interesting things mm-hmm. with it. Uh I mean, by and large, one of my biggest problems was just like it felt wildly unnecessary. Uh mm. Uh, especially, you know, coming on the heels of something like Cabin in the Woods, which is, which again, honestly, again, but that <laughs> in and of itself, I, I honestly felt was was a decent enough, like, you know what, like, yeah, it's fucking bug up there. <laughs> but, uh, but no, no, I, I like seeing, like, you know, like, them, like, actually, like, moving into, like, some fresh territory, like, like, they, they've got some good chops for doing what what they want to do it's just mm-hmm. i think you know like, having like your first prod like your first big project that you know really comes out being like you know a remake or a sequel or something like that like you're kind of limited in in scope a little bit because like there, there are certain beats like you have to hit it's uh-huh. like it's always going to be i mean not not necessarily a hundred percent predictable, mm-hmm. but I mean, you know, at some point, like this is gonna happen. You know, at some point, like later on, like it's like okay, well, these characters have to make it, and these characters have to die. Like mm-hmm. you have to stick to to what you're you're given. But but no, like given something like this, where fucking anything goes. Well, the movie does. Uh, it does do a really good job of foreshadowing, and it also does a good job of not being entirely predictable, because there are things about it that are foreshadowed, and that you know, even if it didn't show this guy die in the trailer, you know which one of these people is only gonna be yeah. in, is only gonna be in about 20 minutes of this film. <laughs> um, so, yeah, right, right there, you know, 
who's gonna who who's gonna make maybe not gonna survive towards the end of the movie, but who's gonna be in it longer than some others. It does a good job of foreshadowing different aspects of this house, like a little piece of glass on the floor, Stephen Lang's gun up or underneath his bed, the... That kind of lingering shot, like, zooming in, like, on that hammer as it's going Yeah, by. um, the hammer, the, uh, kind of crawl space underneath, like, between the floors and yeah. things like that. Well, and that, that um, stuff like that is what made me, like, kind of, like, mm -hmm. like, especially, like, like, I mean, granted, not to the same extent, but, like, yeah, with, like, people under the stairs, like, the whole... Like yeah, crawl spaces and stuff. Uh huh. Exactly. Yeah, somewhere Roach is running through this house, <laughs> and <laughs> crazy like leather daddy Everett McGill running <laughs> through. The that is a good movie. Um, but uh, but no, it also because at first you're watching it and you're like, well, you know, from Stephen Lang's characters forgive the phrase point of view i'm not even trying i don't know how else to say that um too soon you, that man is blind <laughs> he served our country damn it he's above our fucking jokes <laughs> but i mean like at first it's like from his character's point of view like is he the villain in this? Um because he is there are people breaking into his house to steal his shit and they are armed, so from this character, it's like, yeah, all right, like, he's defending his house, he doesn't want these fucking, he already lives in Detroit. He, you he's know. got it bad enough already. Exactly. Sorry, Detroit. <laughs> like, the first scene in this movie, like, showing, like, this run-down street that is equal parts broken windows mm -hmm. and trees as it is walls of mm -hmm. buildings, I'm like... I feel like this is gonna say Detroit, and then like five seconds later, it's like, man, we got to get out of Detroit. I'm like, uh huh. There it is. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's like it's either Detroit or this movie takes place during the events of the game The Last of Us. <laughs> You know, a lot of the establishing shots and neighborhoods in this, I've, I'm not even kidding, I've seen before. Oh, yeah, so like, like, there, there, were, there were a couple places that he's like, I yeah. know yeah, I've been by there before. Yeah, <laughs> it's like, I'm pretty sure I hosted Trauma Dance, like, right next door to where this movie is taking place. <laughs> <laughs> so it's like, this poor guy, like, he already lives in, like, this area of Detroit. Like, but honestly, his house is looking surprisingly good from the outside. The inside for, mm. looks like it matches the neighborhood. Yeah. The outside looks very nice. Oh, yeah. Like, he's he's got the outside up fairly he's, nice. It's all about keeping up appearances. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, I mean, why not? <laughs> he's got some money. But then, like, as the movie goes on, the movie there are aspects of this movie <laughs> that aren't predictable. And one of them is that... Oh, like in The Collector, they have stumbled upon a horror movie fucking in progress. Yeah, it's like, fucking hell. In addition to, you know, them breaking in, like, it, yeah, it very similar to The Collector mm -hmm. with, with uh, you know, this, this heist stumbling into... Ariel Castro's house? Yeah. <laughs> Uh huh. Um, that was a that was a, a turn. Like I know they kind of like teased an image of like that girl shackled up in his basement in the trailer. They but, do, but, but when, by the, when but the movie was going on, no, I'd kind of forgotten about that. Yeah, well, in the, in the trailer too, like there's zero context, so you have no idea what that's even in relation to. Mm -hmm. But yeah, like this is a fucked up situation <laughs> that these guys like decided to break into. Uh huh. And uh, the movie has been out for, and I've, I, I do know that the movie's getting good reviews. Like, I do know that, but I have definitely tried to stay away from anything else about the movie. So we're going to skew that. Zero stars. Yeah, yeah fuck this. Like, <laughs> no, s screw this. Just stay home and watch the darkness. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, like, uh, <laughs> the movie's been out since... Thursday. We're seeing it Tuesday because I was at the con, but um, so I'd, I'd stayed away from uh, quite a bit. There was 
I couldn't help but overhear a couple of things about uh, some people at the con who saw it and liked it, but didn't necessarily like the third act of the movie. I liked it just fine. Watching it, watching it, yeah, I mean, <laughs> you are watching imagery of Stephen Lang standing there with a syringe just filled with his own semen. He is um, a producer. Yeah. That is, yeah. Uh -huh. that is a, a full cup that he has in there. And I can, <laughs> I can see maybe someone watching it and thinking like, this movie's getting a little too fucked up maybe, or maybe this movie is getting slightly cartooned. It never really got there for me because at the end of the day, like, wow, this went in a direction I didn't necessarily expect. At the end of the day, it is still like, Crazy ass Stephen Lang standing there with a goddamn fucking syringe of semen in his hand. You can laugh at that if you want, but that's fucked up. <laughs> yeah, that for for a movie that was already really dark. Mm hmm. That was an unexpectedly dark turn. Yeah. Yeah. And for whatever reason, him slowly walking across the room with a turkey baster mm -hmm. full of the good turkey stuff. Turkey baster. Sorry. Yeah. Uh, he he somehow managed to make that just as uh, just as intimidating looking as if he was walking across the room with like a fucking butcher knife. Yeah, and because like the first the opening shot of this movie is this fucking dead street in Detroit with Stephen Lang just dragging this girl by the hair in the middle of the street. When she's tied up and he has that fucking turkey baster, baster it hasn't shown that part of the movie yet. So for all we know. He could fucking get away with this shit in the movie. <laughs> I mean, yeah, to, no. to a point, he kind of does. That opening scene definitely makes it look like he got away with everything. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. But, oh, fuck. So, yeah, so... Kind of... It, taking it back, like, the reason why these these guys... Uh, two guys in, the, in this girl are breaking into his house is... They're like very accomplished small time mm -hmm. thieves. Yeah. Uh, that I, I always forget that kid's name. I see him in fucking everything. Yeah, days. me too. I remember uh, him from Alexander and the Terrible, Horrible, No Good, Very Bad Day. Yeah, I think he, he was in like, I, I think I remember seeing him in the trailers for Goosebumps. I know he's, oh, he's shown up a yeah. couple times in like Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Like, mm -hmm. I just, I've seen him in a bunch of places. Uh, he's a good actor. Really, yeah, no, he's he's really yeah. good. Uh, but like his dad works for like a, a security company, mm -hmm. so he has access to all these like extra keys for people's places. So like their thing is like they wait, you know, wait until you know one of these pl properties is empty, mm -hmm. go in there, uh, use like their key and like uh, like this little like programmer remote that works for the the security system in the house mm -hmm. and basically go in there, steal everything that'll keep them from getting convicted for a felony mm -hmm. and then get the fuck out. Mm -hmm. And you would figure at a point that like, the police would cotton on to the fact that the only places getting robbed are ones protected by this one particular security firm. <laughs> that guy, I was thinking about that at the beginning. I was like, it's like you could get away with this maybe three a few times. times, a few times. There will be a point where people will stop hiring this man. <laughs> yeah, like there's gonna come a point where the cops are like, I don't know. Somehow they managed to to get into the house. Mm -hmm. Did it, well, you know what? That actually, you know, okay, that that actually explains something that I had a question with. I was I was wondering about that because like the cops would just be like, well, they managed to get in and out every time, you know, scot free. Like how? But then thinking about that that first house at the well, very they beginning, threw a, they they yeah. broke the window, and I thought it was just to set off the alarm. Mm -hmm. But I'm like, no, that makes sense. They get in clean, take everything, and then make a big messy yeah like, entrance as they exit. Mm -hmm. So it's like, oh, they broke the glass. Yeah, that makes sense. Okay, no, but at the same, that, that yeah, was a lingering thing. Like it wasn't oh, adequately explained. Oh no, no, I got that when they threw the thing through there. I got, I got that. My my thought was like I just said, like at some point someone's gonna stop hiring this, this, but, this but security yeah, like, guy. Clearly, like, like how, like I'd be. 
like that's the sort of thing like you hear on the local news is like it's like you'd start like driving down the street like those people are gonna get robbed. Mm-hmm. Those people are gonna get robbed. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's like <laughs> not them. They got ADT. They're okay. That next house though, ooh, they, <laughs> you, you fucked. <laughs> It's like at the end of Home Alone, we're like, ah, oh, you left the water running. Now we know each and every house you've robbed. <laughs> uh, good one, Marv. You know, these guys are also the wet bandits because that one guy decided to just piss in the middle of that one house's living room. Could you imagine, like, the mashup of, like, the wet bandits breaking into <laughs> Stephen Lang's blind Stephen Lang's house? <laughs> it would be much less comical as they're getting hit in the face with an iron. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, somebody needs to do that. Mm-hmm. Internet. Yeah, ex- exactly. <laughs> oh, it's gonna be... There's gonna be more than one nail going through uh, Marv's foot. <laughs> it's gonna be the darkest Christmas movie since Christmas Evil. Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, yeah, they they get a tip from uh, from their fence that they go through. That, uh, you know, like, oh, yeah, there's this, this old dude lives there alone. He had, like, a huge, like, cash settlement for, like, somebody accidentally, like, like a drunk driver or something, like, accidentally killed his kid. Mm-hmm. They settled out of court. Dude walked away with, like, a six-figure settlement. But he still lives in this piece-of-shit house. hmm And stumbles around in the streets looking like a fucking homeless man. Yeah. So they're like, well, we gotta hit this place, and luckily enough, it's one that like your dad's company covers. Mm-hmm. So it's like this is the perfect place, and they find out he's blind. It's like that's amazing. But again, downside, it's Stephen Lang, T- T-Rex skull for a desk. <laughs> He could lose his arms and legs like the fucking Black Knight, and I still wouldn't fuck with him. He's still got teeth. <laughs> and fuck me, like, like when they see him, like, shambling in the street, like, it's hard to tell. Like, he's just kind of going down, like, he's using his cane, like, he's mm-hmm. just kind of, like, taking it slow and everything. Like, he looks like he's not very good at being blind. Mm-hmm. And, oh, that's how they get you. And wearing, <laughs> like, like, you know, it's kind of like a big big homeless coat mm-hmm. it's like okay well he just looks like an old man mm-hmm. but then like the first time you see him like it's like in the house like sitting up in bed in just like a tank top and you realize like his arms are bigger around than my legs are you're like yeah mm-hmm. you guys miscalculated a lot <laughs> Yeah, I love <laughs> actors like Stephen Lang and like Michael Chiklis who like at the beginning <laughs> of their career you know like Stephen Lang is like Goofy reporter in in Manhunter and Chickless, like the commish. And then just give it a couple years and fuck. <laughs> they will fucking snap your neck with one of their fucking arms. Yeah, like every time he was like choking somebody out. Yeah. Which he does a lot. Yeah. <laughs> it's like he's gonna accidentally like snap their neck in half. Mm-hmm. Not on purpose. He just doesn't know how to gauge things. I don't think. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, oh, fuck. It takes... To stop him from strangling one dude, like, it takes us dumping a whole goddamn shelf on him. Yeah. Even that just slows him down a little bit. Yeah, they let them get up that ladder quicker than him. <laughs> yeah. He's still gonna meet you at the front door and shoot you in the face. <laughs> This movie's awesome. Yeah, it is. I like how it's instead of being made out of like jump scare moments, where I mean, it does have a few here and there. uh, But it's 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 only a few, and something's actually happening. And also, it's not. It doesn't make you deaf every time it happens. Honestly, most of the times it's just because that dog jumps out of nowhere. Yeah. Mm Hmm. But uh, but no, it's got a lot of moments that make you kind of like you know, sort of, like, gasp and hold your own breath. Mm-hmm. Because, like, all those scenes of, like, they'll be standing there, like, like, okay, just need to real quiet, move out of the room, camera mm-hmm. moves just a little bit, and he's just standing there, like, it's like pointing a uh-huh. gun, and, like, 
I did hear you like the part where the guy went in to set off that little gas like water bottle and it just panned over and Stephen Lang is just sitting up in bed all of a sudden and you're yeah. just sitting next to me like nope 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 fuck nope because <laughs> he goes in there like he sneaks upstairs Stephen Lang is in bed asleep and mm. their plan is to uh, like they've got like a, a water bottle they were gonna like fill it with like uh, nice. Oh, I got blood all over my hands. Uh, got he. <laughs> but, uh, no, the plan was to uh, sneak in there. They've got some kind of, like, like I think he called it, like, a chloroform bomb or something. Mm-hmm. Like, some, like, homemade thing. <laughs> so he goes up there. He's, like, he's mixing it together, like, stabs it with a pin. And, like, seeming, like, dead asleep, you can hear him snoring. And then all of a sudden, like... Like, he punctures the bottle, he kind of glances up, and he's just sitting up like he's fucking Michael Myers. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, fuck. Fuck you. Mm-hmm. Dead blank eyes just staring right at him. And even if, like, oh, God, like, even if that, th- that fucking gas thing worked, I would have given it a lot longer than just immediately going downstairs and making noise. Yeah, like, his, apparently they must have had amazing success with those in the past or something, mm-hmm. like a 100% success rate. Because, yeah, it's it's just like, it's like a fucking, like, like a soda bottle, like, mm-hmm. you went to the gas station, mix that stuff up in it, punctured it, sets yeah. it on the floor, slowly closes the door, and then basically jumps down the stairs like, fuck this shit! We got this! And it starts beating it is, shit with a crowbar. It's like... It is the stupid guy that's doing all of this. Like, the guy It who is the like, white guy with cornrows who is doing this. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like, it's gonna turn out he's like the fucking bastard son of Dwight Yoakam from Panic Room. <laughs> <laughs> He just jumps down the stairs like, it's like, oh my god. So they're pulling off this heist with the inside man who's got the skills to do this. Mm. The girl who wants to get out of town cause, and she's hungry enough to do what it takes to do anything. Yeah. And Lil Kev. Yeah. <laughs> the fuck? <laughs> like, the f- like, you picked a wrong, like, like... Like I, the, I honestly the, the think Tom that the, Hanks son no one talks about. <laughs> like, I honestly think that the reason he's a member of their like robbery crew is A, he's he personally knows the fence. Yeah. And B, he's the only one of them that has a car. Right. It's mm-hmm. like, well, I'm not gonna walk to a robbery. Yeah. <laughs> practically driving around in my car in the movie. <laughs> <laughs> No, like this, uh, it's great sitting in this movie watching like really, really damn (laughs) intense fucking taut ass filmmaking on camera after seeing a movie, um, like Yoga Hosers. (laughs) You mean that wasn't a tense, tautly... Oh, it was intense for different reasons. (laughs) You mean the fuck out of this theater. God damn it. Fucking movie, yoga hoses. I can't believe I saw that. <laughs> you ever see a movie that's so bad, it's it's just gonna take you a couple nights to realize it's a thing that exists. That's yoga hosers. <laughs> After seeing the trailer, I wasn't sure if it was a thing that exists. I think after like the first time I watched like The Room, like a couple days later, I'm like, someone actually made that. Like. People go to see that. But, like, like, The Room, it's like, yeah, okay, a guy like Tommy Wiseau is going to make a movie like The Room. A movie like Yoga Hosers that is starring and made by talented people. Like, it was like I said in the review for that movie. It was like sitting through, like, Dreamcatcher or some <laughs> shit. Like, talented people got together and made a movie about ass monsters. <laughs> <laughs> that is still one that I'm like it's like I read the book the book is honestly not not bad mm-hmm. it's an interesting read if nothing else that movie though <laughs> <laughs> shit weasels man fucking shit weasels 
the only reason to watch that movie, Damian Lewis is Jonesy. <laughs> right. <laughs> that and that scene with Morgan Freeman and his weird cotton ball eyebrows. Yeah. <laughs> Son of a bitch. Oh, you could see Johnny Depp with big cotton ball eyebrows in this. Yeah, I, I read a uh, uh, one like quick review I saw online. Uh, I, it was on one of the, the the different sites. Like it just gave a little blurb. It, it basically it said nepotism at its finest. <laughs> well, I mean, I it, it's less like something like After Earth because I mean, it's, it, I'd rather watch After Earth. Don't get me wrong, but like it's less something because this it. It's just one of those goofy comedies where you can tell they're all having fun on camera, and they're the only ones who are fucking having fun. And, and that's that's a thing that, in, in a way, like it's a shame sometimes because it's like, you know that like when they were making this, it probably seemed like such a great idea, and everyone was like fucking dying while they were making it, and then you actually like edit it together and screen it for someone who wasn't there, uh -huh. and they're like, hmm. <laughs> so that's what you did, huh? On your family vacation. I would love somebody watching this video who sees like the first few minutes of it and just kind of skips to the end and thinks that we're still talking about Don't Breathe at this point. Like, fucking nepotism the movie and the goddamn ass monsters. The fuck? It's like, this took a turn. <laughs> the trailer didn't give away anything. I most certainly did not. <laughs> Any final thoughts on... Don't breathe, because I don't want to. Sp I, I mean, go see the movie, and I, uh, I will say b before I forget uh, that I really love that this movie is doing well because I love going to see movies like this in green room that just mix it up a bit from all of the. Look, whenever like a horror movie comes out on the mainstream. Nine times eight, nine times out of ten, it's a haunted house movie or a ghost movie or some paranormal stuff. And look, that yeah, a lot of that stuff can still be good. The, the Conjuring Two is really good, but the but, the market's kind of saturated. Yeah, it's like <clears throat> it's kind of like how like everybody was doing like zombie stuff there for a while, and they still are. Yeah, but I mean, even that's kind of slowing down. Thank God. Um, and it just kind of got a little overplayed. Like, it's the same way right now with, like, mm -hmm. like yeah, like, if, if you're going to do a horror movie, it's almost like you're required to, like, and then something as spooky happens. Yeah, and, and look, like, when you have so many of them, like, like I said, like, eight or nine times out of ten, when you have so many of them, yeah, a couple of them are still pretty good. Like, again, The Conjuring 2 is really fucking good. Uh, Lights Out was fine. Uh, but, you know, then you have shit like the other side of the door and the in, darkness in the forest and, and the forest yeah you know, stuff like that it's like every other one me, we've seen this year i yeah like it's like give me more stuff like this stuff like that it's real human horror stuff that's like texas chainsaw massacre maniac you know don't go in the house like really fucking psychological ass horror like this like like this movie and because of that I'm, I'm really glad this this movie's doing well it's number one at the box office by Friday it already made its money back yeah well and, and that's uh, like you said they're like like really like like kind of like human horror because yeah mm -hmm. like that's the thing like I was working on my my list of like movies that I'm gonna you know sit down and watch here come October mm -hmm. and one of the categories I was I was working with was like it's like you know like movies were like Turns out, like, man is the most dangerous animal type shit. Where it's yeah. like, 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 maniac. Where it's like, mm -hmm. there's nothing, you know, supernatural about it. There's no, like, weird twists about it. It's just a guy fucking killing people. <laughs> mm -hmm. That's it. Sometimes it doesn't have to be anything scarier than just a guy who doesn't give a fuck. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and, again, like, that's a hell of a double feature with like fucking don't go in the house when you have crazy guy who has mommy issues and lives by himself and the movie also has mannequins in it oh it's gonna be weird <laughs> <laughs> and and yeah like the, there's something just absolutely terrifying about mm. Stephen lang in this that, yeah god <laughs> that in in this movie here probably gets 
honestly more good like chills and scares than like what you would normally think of as like like you know silent horror movie icons you know like Mm -hmm. like jason and michael myers and stuff like that like it's like he's just a fucking machine in this but Mm -hmm. god damn it it works yeah it works and it sets it up too. why he's such he's he's so good at this it isn't like it isn't one of those things like he's blind so that's elevated his senses no like it says he's not like murderous like daredevil yeah no uh -uh. it's just he was really good before he went blind Mm -hmm. and you're in the one place he absolutely (laughs) knows yeah (laughs) and he's already kidnapped a person (laughs) fuck but uh, any other final thoughts about it? I mean, I highly fucking recommend uh, the movie. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I yeah, trying trying hard not to like give away the whole farm with this one. But I mean, there's a lot of stuff that's like, yeah, it just like it it doesn't let up and it doesn't. Mm-hmm. There's never really like good like breathing room time in this. Like it mm-hmm. keeps it tight. Like it yeah. keeps moving constantly it does there is there is no lag in this film like once once they and i mean then they get to the house pretty quick no they do yeah uh probably 20 15 20 minutes into the movie yeah i mean it, <coughs> excuse me uh yeah i mean it, it doesn't it gives you just enough time to kind of get familiar with mm-hmm. everybody and then it gets them to the house like it mm-hmm. doesn't fuck around like well then it would be too much like the collector which is a movie i love i love that yeah. I, I love that the collector takes its time like that but oh, it, yeah exactly like i, I love the collector but mm-hmm. with i mean it makes more sense since it's just one guy yeah getting getting that little bit of extra time mm-hmm. uh and if this movie did the same thing it would be too similar it, 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 the structure would be too similar in both in both movies so it it, it works for this film that it yeah. that it sets itself up like that and yeah like, like there's a lot of a lot of very close parallels mm-hmm. but it's still different enough but yeah i never felt like i it, it's just it's dear god is this movie suspenseful and intense i never felt like i'm watching a ripoff or anything like that because yeah i mean well, well this is more like people under the stairs you know the collector mm-hmm. was more like like you know they broke into you know like arkin breaking into like a saw movie in progress yeah <laughs> like with mm-hmm. intricate death traps and shit set up all over the house exactly and this isn't that this isn't like the the masked you know, jigsaw type killer like like the collector this this isn't that at all this is cuz i mean there there were a couple times just just based on like prior experience with other similar movies like somebody would go to like it's like oh man like they can't get this door open and they're going to like turn the handle like oh man it's like booby trapped and they're going to be like like a shotgun in the wall or something that's going to like <laughs> shoot them or something like that uh-huh. it's like no but it's the sort of thing it's just like like so many movies that are structured similar to mm-hmm. to this do do things like that so yeah. it's like it's like oh they're gonna try to pull that open and you know this will happen or like like oh they'll go to move something and like oh it turns out it's like rigged to like you know like <laughs> you pick it up and like an alarm goes off or something like that like, <laughs> like I, I kept waiting for stuff like that to happen and it, it's not there but it's like mm-hmm. you just feel like you should be expecting it mm-hmm. and it's good because it plays with your expectations and it goes and it goes against that like fuck remember when we played that stupid uh saw video game <laughs> like i don't know man why don't you try that door over there okay shotgun in the back of the head from huh well, okay, maybe let's not try that so, one next time. So if you open that door, there's a shotgun above it. <laughs> Turns out. <laughs> Turns out they put a shotgun up there. You know, like you do in your own place. <laughs> it's one of those things, like, it, it, it takes me back to, like, the logic in, like, Resident Evil, like the mm-hmm. first video game, where it's like, really? They gotta do all this just to get across the house? Like, every door is locked and each one has a different key and they're mm-hmm. hidden in obtuse places around the house? Like, yeah. Like, that's just the thing. Like, you could like, oh man, really gotta use the bathroom, but first I gotta go upstairs like, move a bookcase. Like, no! Fuck that, I'm pissing, I'm pissing in a can. <laughs> so no, gonna, I put a mouse trap in it! <laughs> it's gonna open the door, just gonna pee outside. It's, yeah. Do not give a fuck anymore. <laughs> Alright, uh, sorry, Monday, my days are all messed up. Uh, <laughs> Monday. Thursday. So, hey, thir- Thursday, they're doing like a, a fathom screening of uh, 
Rob Zombie's 31. So that's coming up on thir- on Thursday. I don't know what else. I think that Morgan movie is. Yeah, I think that's um, this week. Morgan is, and I'm... I'm <laughs> I'm Slightly sure less else. strange things. <laughs> <laughs> right? I was thinking that too. <laughs> I was as well. So, um, yeah, those will be coming up this weekend. So I'm going to go, uh, I'm going to go crash. Cause I just, I just got back from Buffalo. <laughs> See it. <laughs>